Hello everyone! Welcome to this Sims 3 house design video. So today I am here in Plymouth, Isle, which is a world that I created completely from scratch. I have a series on my channel where I create the world and all the community lots. So if you haven't yet, go check that out on my channel. But yeah, um, this is yet another house for the world as I'm continuing to fill in uh, many of the lots with pre-built houses. Um, this house is called Green Georgian because it's kind of a Georgian style house um, that's colored green. So yeah, that's why I named it that. Uh, this is a two part video because even though it's not a huge house, it ended up taking me quite a while to build this house. I think uh, mostly because I kind of had some difficulties with the floor plan and all that kind of stuff. So some of that took a little while, but yeah, uh, it's a two part video. So the part two will be out um, relatively soon after this one, you know, a day or two. So if you're watching this video on the day it comes out, stay tuned for part two. And, you know, if you're watching this video anytime in the future, there should be a link in the description below where you can check out part two. And there also should be an end card at the end of this video. So, you know, I recommend watching this video first and then heading over to part two. But anyway, yeah, this house ends up having three bedrooms and three and a half bathrooms. So it's not a huge house, but it did end up taking me a while. And it's supposed to be kind of an old but and like classy kind of house. So that's kind of the idea behind it. So yeah, it's kind of like, um, you know, it's somewhat of, like of a, a manor type of thing, even though it's not a huge. Um, but anyway, uh, this is built on lot number 36. So if you want to download the house, of course you can. There's a link in the description below so you can download this house and place it in your own game. And this is actually a quite interesting lot because it's kind of an interesting shape and just like the terrain is kind of interesting. It's built on a lot that is I think 23 blocks wide by like 50 um, something blocks deep. So, you know, it is um, it is an interesting lot. And it's also quite a steep lot. It doesn't look like a super steep hill, but it is, there's quite a huge difference between like the height of a lot at the front and at the back. So I end up having like this terraced uh, backyard, all that kind of stuff. Um, this house ends up having a pool. So you can see I'm building this kind of area here. Um, that's going to be the indoor pool. And then I also have a fun garden in the backyard, but I think this is actually the first house I've ever built um, in a, for a video that has an indoor pool, so that's kind of fun. Um, this house is built uh, right next door to Azalea Manor, which is a house I did back in the winter. And it's like across the street from the art gallery, so it's like right in the town center of the world, which is kind of fun. But anyway, right here, I'm just kind of, you know, getting in that indoor pool. Um, and yeah, since the house is built in the town center, I want it to be, like, appear like older. Like I imagine that the houses that are in the town center are kind of like the oldest houses in the world. You know, they're like the original ones. They were built, you know, with the like, other main buildings like the city hall and the art gallery, etc. You know, because it was built as like a small town initially and kind of spread outward. So that's why I kind of imagine like these houses here in the t like right in the town center as being kind of larger, older, more stately houses. So that's kind of the idea. So even though this house isn't super huge, you know, it's kind of meant to kind of fit into that uh, sort of thing. But anyway, you can see here I have those stairs in. Uh, I used constrained floor elevation stairs in this house to get these kind of uh, switch back stairs, if you will. So you kind of go up half a level and turn around and head up the other set of stairs there. Um, it does mean that the floor plan was a challenge um, because of all the kind of walls that kind of um, I had to create around the stairs. Kind of like this like extra wasted space that goes like around the staircase, which is always kind of difficult to work with, but it's just because of the way the floors and ceilings and everything is kind of sloped around that area. So that in particular is what made making uh, this floor plan work really difficult just because um, you know, I, I just like had kind of a limitation on the space I had. So I really wanted to fit two bedrooms and one bathroom on this side of the house here. But I had a lot of trouble dealing with kind of that like extra wall pieces I had to have um, because of the stairs. So that was a little frustrating. But in the end, I did figure it out. It just took, uh, you know, a little bit of time and work. And that's why this video is a little bit longer. Um, you know, I mean, I think it ended up being like 50 minutes total. So that's why I split it up into two 25 minute uh, videos because I thought that made a little bit more sense. It's also a little bit less um, talking for me all at once. Um, so, you know, it's a little bit easier to talk for two 25-minute periods and like one 50-minute period. So, you know, 
uh, so that's why I split the video up into two. But anyway, right here you can see I am uh, just kind of still figuring out this upstairs floor plan. You can see that front bedroom is really, really small. I do end up making it larger. And then the other bedroom behind it is the most bizarre shape ever. And it does end up being a bizarre shape in the end, but like a little bit better than that right now, than like what it is now. It was kind of a, an issue at first because when I was putting beds in, the bed didn't really fit in the room in any like good way. So I ended up having to readjust, but you know, never mind. It's all fine uh, in the end. So anyway, this is the master bathroom. I actually ended up adding an addition to this side of the house, uh, which was a first attempt to make the roof look better, which I don't even think we've gotten to the roof yet. Um, and then I end up removing that room that's like behind the stairs on the second floor here, which ideally I would want to be like a fourth bedroom. And then I was like, well, there's no way to get to it. So maybe I'll make it a nursery that's attached to the master bedroom. But then it's just like the roof was really weird, so it helped to remove that room. So yeah, I did end up getting rid of that room, and then I ended up redoing the roof. Um, so yeah, I do the roof one time, then I do it again. But you know, it ends up looking good in the end, so that's kind of what matters most. So you know, it, it ends up all working out fine. Anyway, um, right now I'm just trying to work out this area. So I kind of changed around the guest bathroom there, which you can see. And I think this is the final shape of that bedroom or both of those bedrooms. You can see the smaller one is now a better size and the other one is now a better shape. So right now I'm getting on the first roof. I end up adding a freeze level here between the second floor and the roof, just to add a little bit more detail to the house. So um, you can see that here. And initially I went for a gabled roof, but when I redo the roof, I end up making it a hipped roof, which you'll see. And yeah, the big issue here is just how weird the roof was uh, initially. So you can see it's just kind of strange with what's happening back here, mainly because of that center room. It, it made it kind of difficult to work with. So I'm really glad I ended up redoing the roof. So I mean, I think that happens more like halfway through, which you'll see. But right now I'm, I was trying to add this like shed dormer, not, not a dormer, but like this kind of like shed sort of roof here, whatever you call it, where the pitch changes and it just looked really strange and I don't know it just wasn't working super great so you know it, it it's better in the end anyway right now I, I had to remove that actual little what do you call that like bay window there because it was cutting out the roof below which is kind of annoying but no matter anyway right now I had this like front little entrance thingy so I'm just kind of putting that in right now so there's some columns some nice little railings there just to make the entrance look a little bit more stately um, anyway, just extending the chimney. Unfortunately, they couldn't build the chimney tall enough, so making the roof a hip to roof helped as well because the chimney didn't need to be as tall in the first place. So that was good. Anyway, right here, I think for the pool, I think I'm about to expand the pool room a little bit, which I ended up uh, making a little bit bigger because it's kind of small. And then I also added a lot of retaining walls in the backyard just because the terrain is really um, steep. So it helped a lot to have these uh, retaining walls here. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now. So, yep. And right here, I'm kind of just lowering the retaining wall down a little bit, making it kind of uh, conform to the terrain a little bit better. And here I'm adding in some doors for the pool room. Uh, I do expand the pool room like I mentioned before. I don't know when I get to that exactly. Probably pretty soon though. Yeah, here we go. So I made it a little bit larger and I do the same thing on the other side. And then later on, I make it actually even bigger. So that all kind of helps make it a little bit of a more usable space. But anyway, right now I'm just getting in some windows over here on this side of the house. Um, so just getting in some of that. And yeah, I do kind of change up the floor plan on the first floor a little bit once I change the roof. So you'll see, you'll see that. Uh, soon, but right now it's getting in some more windows here. Uh, so a little window there, some windows there. It's all very exciting. And you can see on this house, I have shutters, which is something that I kind of uh, discovered with my last house, which was uh, Daffodil Heights. And I, I put shutters on that house and I was like, oh, I like using shutters now. So I put them here too. But anyway, here you can see is kind of where I started adding this addition to the house. So this was one attempt to make the roof look a little bit better, although it didn't fully work, but you know, it had a little bit more space to the house. You can see here, I'm just kind of expanding this area here and um, we have like uh, an extra space in the master bedroom now. So I add two closets to the master bedroom and I expand the master bathroom as well. And the downstairs gets a half bathroom um, out of this little addition here. And it kind of was meant to like make the roof look a little bit better, but it didn't entirely work. So, I mean, eh, it is what it is, I guess. But, you know, I was kind of hoping 
that it would kind of help fix that problem. But you know, it's fine. Um, you can see the master bathroom gets pretty big. It gets even bigger when I remove that back room as well. So anyway, you can see here, I added a little half bathroom on the first floor. I also change up this area, I think a little bit right now, but more so later, because I moved the kitchen actually from being that small room on the right, like the back right, to being the center back of the house, kind of where the basement stairs are. And then I uh, was able to make the dining room larger, which is nice. But anyway, right now it looks like we may be beginning on doing the exterior colors of the house and stuff. I went with lighter stone initially, but changed it uh, in the end. Uh, but yeah, and of course, as you probably will not be surprised to hear, I do, you know, make the whole house one color and then change my mind later. So, you know, shocking, isn't it? I do that basically every time. Uh, so, you know, it is what it is. Anyway, right here, I'm just getting in um, kind of a light green. I do tweak the color a little bit later on, but this, it doesn't change too much. Um, that was kind of the idea I had for this house in my mind, was it kind of being a light green. And then uh, the shutters are also green, though I do, I think, make them more... I think I make them a little different. They're more like yellow green, I think, in the end than what they are right now. But anyway, right here, just getting that siding on the house, going kind of all around the place, getting all that... Uh, kind of everywhere. So, you know, I was doing that. I also change out what I'm doing right now in the eaves uh, for the gable roofs. I initially went with kind of this uh, pattern of woodworking, but I do change it in the end. I also change the front eave to just be stone in the end because I wasn't a huge fan of having it be something else that kind of looked a little bit strange to me. So, I just end up doing that. But anyway, right now, just going around, uh, you know, getting that siding on the house. So, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, all very important. And I do change the stone color to be darker because there wasn't really enough contrast as it is now. Um, so I, I do improve that. But anyways, getting in uh, some trees, just some initial trees, though, of course, most of the landscaping is going to take place in part two. So, um, you know, stick around for that. Uh, but anyway, here getting in uh, kind of a little fence, a little stone wall. Um, along the front of the house here, which is nice. It kind of makes it look a little bit fancier. And then I got a little gate in, though of course, I mean, you can just walk around the wall, so the gate isn't really keeping anyone out. Also, the driveway is just open, but, you know, um, it's just more of to look fancy, so that's kind of why I decided to do that. And here you can see getting in the driveway, um, excuse me, <laughs> getting in the driveway. Um, yeah, so putting that in, a uh, nice sloped driveway right here going down to the garage door. So, you know, very nice. And I'm just going to add a retaining wall, of course. Like I said, there's going to be lots of retaining walls um, on this property just because of all the different terrain and all that kind of stuff that's happening. So, yeah. And right here, just adding these nice little details kind of at the ends of the walls just so it looks kind of fancy. I do that in the back as well a little bit. I do that with a lot of my houses. But anyway, right here, just putting on the darker stone, which I think helped a lot with contrast. And I'm changing the shutter colors, though they don't stay this way either. Um, but yeah, just kind of looking, th look, working through different options here. But yeah, I also end up actually getting the final siding color by looking at a website called Design Seeds, which kind of has these different color palettes and stuff. I really like that website. Uh, so I actually picked out some colors for like some interior walls and like the exterior colors from there. So yeah, you might, at some points later on, you might notice me just entering in hex codes for the colors and that's kind of what I was doing there. But anyway, here's where I change up the house the most. So I remove that whole back section on the second floor. Uh, which really, really improved um, the roofing situation. And then you can see I'm just making some changes here. Uh, and what else is happening? I guess I also uh, adjust the master bathroom as well. But what I did, by, well, basically by removing that room, made the house an L shape, which made it easier to add a roof to instead of just kind of being a weird giant box. So that was kind of the idea behind it. And here I'm expanding the freeze level. So that kind of goes over there. And I also expand the lower kind of room there that's kind of in the middle of the U-shape. I think I said L-shaped. I meant to say U-shaped house. But yeah, here you can see the roof works a little bit better now. I uh, make it all hipped, which I thought looked nicer too. And now it's just like a nice U-shaped hip roof, uh, which helped a lot with the roofing situation. And down here I added this uh, half gable. Um, roof. So you can see I'm getting that in right now. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the half gable to be the width I wanted, so I just expanded this lower area, which actually helped me create the kitchen in that room where the basement stairs are and then a laundry room uh, beside it. 
So that's kind of what went on right there. But yeah, so just kind of getting into all of that. So you can see those are the major changes that kind of happened at this point in the process. So, you know, I think this looks a lot better though, and it works out a lot better. Now the dining room's much bigger because I moved the kitchen. So I can kind of fit in a better dining table. So all of that is very, very nice. But anyways, the living room, the living room's not huge. I just getting in a couple couches there. And yeah, so I think that's pretty much it though for adjusting um, all the roofing and all that kind of stuff. So very nice. But yeah, it looks much better now, I think, in my opinion. Even though the house is now a little bit smaller, the roof looks a lot better. It's just kind of more suiting. Uh, right here in this area that I'm kind of uh, flattening out is going to be a garden. And I actually have been wanting to put a garden in one of my houses for a while. I was going to do it in the last house, but there wasn't really enough space. So this house had like a really good opportunity to do that because of the large lot. So I kind of just created a terrace and I made a nice garden there. So I think you'll see that in part two, uh, but that'll be very nice. And I also had a little like potting shed uh, down here at the bottom of the hill. So I thought that was nice too. And then some stairs that kind of go down to that area. So it's kind of like this terraced backyard. So that's very nice. I think it's pretty cool. I like, you know, working with lots that kind of have interesting terrain as well. Anyway, right here, just kind of just doing some adjustments for those stairs and uh, getting in uh, the retaining wall that kind of goes along the back there. So yeah, there you go. And flattening out this area here where the um, what's it called? A garden will go. So yeah. And I'm also going to get in some stairs that go between this little area where the pool is. So like up by the pool is uh, like an outdoor uh, lounge area slash dining area. So that's very nice. And I also have uh, like a little, like, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, like a little outdoor eating area as well. I think I said, did I already say that? Maybe I did. Anyway, yeah, a little outdoor eating area, a little grill, some lounge chairs on the top uh, by the pool. And then go down a level, and it's like the garden, and then go down another level, and it's just kind of like some grass and like the shed. But anyway, here I'm connecting this retaining wall to the house, so just doing that because I kind of flattened out that whole area down here. And here's where I move all that foundation, and I make this now a much more usable area, and I make the pool room much larger as well. So all that kind of works out a little bit better now. But anyway, those are those changes there. Uh, right now, I think I'm just kind of doing some small adjustments to the inside floor plan since I kind of, you know, made those changes with the roofing. So right here, I make the master bathroom even larger, which is very nice. And you can see the master bedroom is now a little bit larger, uh, which actually that was from the earlier edition. But it's now it has the two closets. kind of makes up for the fact that the smallest bedroom doesn't have a closet at all. Not even the small, like, fake angle corner closet that I usually do. There wasn't really space. Okay, right here I'm actually doing the color for the house. So I found this uh, color swatch from that website I was talking about earlier and I actually made one side of the house each a different color to compare but I ended up uh, going with this color you can see I have right here. And then I also um, was looking for shutter colors as well which I think, I, well right now I'm changing the wood color on the windows I think but uh, I will uh, adjust the shutter color as well soon. But yeah, uh, it's kind of like a slightly different green color. I think a little bit more yellowish, a little more sophisticated. Um, I think that's the shutter color right there I end up going with. So a little bit brighter green. So anyway, here you can see I'm going to adjust the whole house. Um, it's a very, very slight difference, but I think you can probably tell actually. It's going from a little bit more of a brighter bluish green to more of a more dull, subtler, yellowish green. So that's kind of what's happening. But anyway, just adding that around the house right now. And I'm also adding this kind of nice little detail here. You can see in the front of the house that has um, these kind of like trim in that square area. And I was going to have, again, like this sort of trim up here in the front, what do you call that, the front gable. But I ended up not doing that. I ended up just making it stone. Although I did put like some nice detailing in the gables on the other uh, gables in the house. So, like, that's what I ended up using all the other gables in the house, but just not the front one. I thought it looked better as stone. But anyway, you can see now the situation with the chimney is now resolved, now that the roof is a hipped roof, because now the chimney doesn't need to be as tall, so I didn't need to worry about making the chimney taller. Anyway, here, just going through, recoloring these windows, all the windows and doors, of course, have to recolor them naturally. So, you know, just going around doing that, uh, down here by the pool. I actually have yet to change the siding down here as well. So, but going through, doing all that recoloring, how exciting. The garage door as well, of course, and all these shutters here around the house. So just doing that right now. And yeah, uh, I think, yeah, I'm just going to do the 
siding down by the pool area. So just recoloring that here, as you can see, a nice walkout basement area. I think it kind of makes the house more interesting to have that. And then of course the shed as well. I'm going to add the siding to that, which is nice. So just doing that right here and adding in some windows as well. And then also some uh, new color for the columns there and adjusting these stairs here uh, and yeah you can see also I added a white picket fence that kind of creates that little garden area that I was talking about earlier which is very nice and then here I added these little um, details to the retaining wall just so it looks kind of nice just in that upper area but yeah so those are kind of those main changes and believe it or not we have yet even to begin on any furnishing with this house and we're already nearly 21 minutes into this video so you know that's why this house uh, took so long to finish because I kept fiddling with a lot of things but you know it is what it is anyway um, I've just got in the front stairs here I'm just doing the driveway so just a very simple uh, pavement here on the driveway just kind of going down there and you see it's kind of a sharp turn to get into the garage as you can see at the bottom I'm not really sure how you'd get your car in and out but you know it's it's more just decorative if anything you know so no worries actually I do get the garden in the first part for some reason I thought it was in the second part but it's not it's in the first part so that's fun you can see it right here right now so anyway I put in these like patches of dirt and then I got in um, two rows of like various fruit vegetables and then three rows of trees I think I have uh, what is it apple plum and lime so those are the trees and I think I have grapes lettuce and peppers or tomatoes I think uh, I think those are the other plants so yeah but of course you can plant whatever you desire if you want to but yeah it's nice to have the garden I like doing I like having that I like never do it ever but I just like thought about it for this house, so I decided, yeah, why not? I also end up removing all of the terrain paint around the garden. I, I left it as grass. I thought it looked a little bit nicer, so yeah, I left that that terrace more grass. I thought that it worked better for the garden. It's more natural. Anyway, adding some trim to the retaining walls, getting in some more trees, I guess. So, you know, I was getting those around, uh, around the house. Um, and yeah, also adjusting these windows right here. Where the dining room is but anyway I think that's mostly it for the exterior stuff right now uh, I think the only interior part of the house I get to in this part is the kitchen so I mean I guess we'll get to see that but right now getting in some lighting here so yes we do do the kitchen in this uh, part but the rest of the house is going to be in part two so you know it is what it is uh, it just took me a while to build this house so Anyway, right here, getting in the kitchen, it's not huge, but it's meant to look kind of more old. Um, you know, not like not like bad old, but kind of more like, um, you know, charming old, I guess, is the idea with this house. So here, just kind of getting in the different cabinets and stuff, getting in the flooring here. And you can see the stairs to the basement are in this room. They're also kind of underneath the funky ceiling that's kind of created by the other stairs so in real life if it was built this way your sims would hit their head going down the stairs but I don't think it's an issue in the sims so you know no need to worry about that anyway right here I'm recoloring all the doors and archways and stuff inside the house because I had yet to do that and I also added doors to the basement there as well which is good but anyway uh, back to the kitchen so you can see we got the flooring going on uh, recoloring the counters and cabinets so we're going for like a light blue color scheme in this room but yeah, so just recoloring the upper cabinets as well, and a little laundry, not laundry, sorry, washing machine, oh goodness, dishwasher, that's what that is, and then also the other appliances in here as well, so just going through, recoloring all that, and then I'm also going to get in the wallpaper, of course, so going for, you know, this kind of nice wallpaper with the wainscoting, which I end up uh, putting some tiles on, and all that kind of stuff. I used um, vertical paneling in this area because of the weird funky walls. So that kind of helps make it look a little bit less weird and funky. So that's what I went, uh, ended up going with for that. And then I also doubled up the light to make it brighter because it's kind of a dark room. Getting a little trash can in right there, um, smoke detector and burglar alarm as well. And yeah, but anyway, we're actually very near to the end here. So I hope you enjoyed this first part of this video. Um, again, if you're watching this anytime in the future after this video is posted, part two is up. 
you'll be able to click uh, a card on the end screen, which is coming up in just a few moments. It also will be a link in the description below. And of course, you can always download the house. There's a link in the description below to download the house. I built it on lot number 36 in Plymouth Isle. And if you enjoyed this video, and if you enjoy the videos I make, I'd greatly appreciate it if you consider subscribing. If you like the video, make sure to give it a like, and I'd love to hear your feedback in the comments below. But yeah, we just have a few more moments here while I work on the kitchen, just getting in a few more details and stuff before we kind of end the video. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you all have a great rest of your day.